Amen. Praise the Lord. We're looking at a very important topic, conformed to the image of Christ, conformed to the image of Christ. And uh, it's very clear to me that through being people of the word, walking in the spirit, we conform to the image of Christ. There are two ways that people can conform. They can either conform to the world, which is a bad way of conforming, and that's in Romans 12, verse 2. It talks about not being conformed to the world. And uh, there is also conforming to the image of Christ or the image of God's Son. And uh, that's the good type of conforming. That's the type of conforming that we as believers in Christ should be involved in. And that's so very, very important. You know, uh, I received a flyer in the letterbox recently and it showed uh, there was invitation to particular religious services and it showed in there that uh, they were conforming to the way the world was looking at uh, everything around them and uh, was looking at particularly what is being shown as uh, reality, being shown as uh, what we need to be thinking in terms of, of the world system and in particular the media. Mm. We must be quite the opposite to that. Our presentation must be from the word of God. We cannot conform to the world and no church should conform to the world or be thinking uh, the wrong things. And the only way we can come to the right conclusions is through the word of God, having the mind of Christ and being conformed to the image of Christ. So let's first of all have a look at Romans 8 verses 9 to 11. Romans 8, 9 to 11, as we look into what it means to be conformed to the image of Christ and particularly living in a world which obviously has fallen. Uh, the world has a, a God, Satan, and obviously he wants people to go his way, not God's way. And that's something that we need to keep in mind and be very clear about. Looking at Romans 8, we'll start from verse 9 and we'll go to verse 11. It says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So we see quite clearly that when we're born again, the Spirit of God dwells in us. We are partakers of the divine nature, the Bible says, that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, is spirit, little s. Our born-again spirits have come from the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, and he dwells in us. Verse 10, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. So we see that the Lord Jesus Christ is in us. Uh, we're no longer people that are going along the dictates of um, the material, but we are going along what the Lord is showing us through the Spirit of Christ, through the Spirit of life. Or well, the Spirit here is life. He's given us new life. He's given us direction. He's given us righteousness so we can stand in... Uh, in a right way before the Lord and do the right things before the Lord. Very important. Verse 11, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. There is indeed, and we, we should bear this in mind, there is indeed a connection between us having the Spirit of God in us and leading us and our bodies being quickened by the Spirit so that our bodies in the flesh start to do what God wants done so that we're not uh, allowing uh, 
things of the world or things of the flesh to dictate, but in fact, it's starting to conform to the way the Spirit of God wants us to go. So let's have a look a little bit further. Go to verse 29 and we'll go to verse 30, 29 to 32 of chapter 8 of Romans here. Starting from verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? <clears throat> God is not holding back. He wants to freely give us all things. There is a plan that God has put into place. And that's what it's talking about in verse 29. Whom he did foreknow. He knew you. He knew me. You're not unplanned. It says he also did predestinate. So this is your destiny, so to speak. This is where you, uh, where God wants you to be and what he wants you to do. And that plan has been right from the beginning. Now we do have a free will to go God's way, but just realize that God has a predestinated way for us. Okay, He did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So God wants us to be just like his son, just like Christ, to be conformed, to be just like him. So we would expect that Christians, uh, once you're born again, you now start to grow, you now start to develop in God, you now start to become more and more like Christ, not less and less, not be going away from the word, not becoming un more and more unknowledgeable about God or the word, but to grow in the knowledge of God, to grow in the knowledge of the word, be to be students of the word, to be people that walk in the ways of God, understanding the word of God. This is truly what God is wanting for his people. Look at 1 Corinthians Chapter 1, 1 Corinthians 1, we'll go to verses 30 and 31 of 1 Corinthians 1. Now God, as I said before, has a way for us, has predestinated that we be conformed to the image of Christ and he shows us how we are to be conformed. We're not to be people without a direction, but in fact we are to be people that are not conforming to the world. As I said before, the world has a uh, false god over it. It has uh, Satan in charge because Adam sold out in the Garden of Eden. But we are not to be conformed to the world. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness, but to be conformed to God and his holy way. We're to be holy even as God is holy. So looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 30 and 31, it says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Why would we be glorying in the Lord? Because of what Christ has made unto us, what God has done in our lives. So where are we to get wisdom now? We are in Christ. We're in Christ, so we're to be getting wisdom from the Lord. Where, where are we to get our righteousness? We're in Christ. Our righteousness is not our own. Now we've been given the gift of righteousness and so we are righteous in Christ. How are we to be sanctified? 
Well, Jesus has both sanctified us, put us, uh, or taken us out of the world, and also shows that we are to be sanctified in him through his word. Redeemed. Redemption. Where are we to have redemption and all the benefits of redemption? But in Christ, what did Jesus do? He purchased us by his blood. And the salvation that he provides through this redemption has all been paid for, has all been provided for, and now we have to walk in it. So as believers in Christ, as those that are conformed to the image of Christ, we can't be going away from these positions. We can't be coming less wise. We can't be, be doing works that are not of righteousness. We can't be not uh, allowing the word of God to sanctify us. And we can't be saying, well, you know, I don't understand my benefits in the redemption that Christ has, has given. No, in all of this that's been provided by the Lord through the Lord Jesus Christ, we glory in the Lord. We glory in the Lord. We say, Lord, it is all of you and what you have provided, and I will walk in this and get more and more conformed to the image of Christ because I know what he's done. And as it says there, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus. So our identity, who we are, what we are, and how we are to walk is meant to be in Christ Jesus. And that's important for us to see because as we are in the world, but not of the world, because we're of the Lord Jesus Christ and of his kingdom, there's going to be lots of temptations to go the world's ways. But if you know who you really are through the word of God, who you really are and who you are really meant to be, then you'll know the direction you're to go. You're not to go the way that's opposite to the Lord, which is to start to continue to be conformed to the world, but you're to go the way of the Lord. In Christ Jesus, to be conformed to the image of Christ more and more. So let's have a look at an example of how we are to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a look at John 8 verse 12. John 8 verse 12. Now the Lord Jesus Christ here makes a statement of who he is. John 8 12. Now remember, keep in mind that you are in Christ. You are in Christ and you're meant to be like him. And John 8, 12 tells us, and let's read what it says here. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is wonderful, wonderful news. Who is the light of the world? Christ is the light of the world. Christ is the light of the world. But did you know that the Bible says that we are the light of the world too? We'll look at that in a minute. Why? Because we're in Christ. Christ is saying here, the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. So what are we walking in? Light, but shall have the light of life. We are following the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the shepherd. He is the master. He is the one we are to follow. And we are not to walk in darkness. And we won't walk in darkness as in those who are stumbling around, like the wicked, those without God, without a covenant, without Christ. We're not people without hope. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, I am the light of the world. And because of that, we have the light of life as well. We have the light of life. This is something that we have that we can conform to. 
that we can say, well, I'm no longer a person that's without hope or without a direction or doesn't know what God wants or doesn't know why I'm here on the earth. I have the light of life. It's a good thing to say. Let's have a look at Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. And we'll see what the Lord calls his people here. Now remember, you are in Christ. You are in Christ. And you're not outside of Christ. You're not in darkness. You're in Christ. And here's the light of the world. And what does Matthew 5, 14 to 16 say? Let's read it. It says, Ye are the light of the world. That's you and me. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. <clears throat> now, how is your light shown? How is your light shown to the world? The Bible tells us in the very next, very next verse, in verse 16, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So how are you allowing your light to shine but through the good works that God wants you to do whilst you're on the earth? You're not walking in darkness because if the world sees you walking in darkness, you're just like them. Okay, You can do uh, all types of things which are sinful and evil in nature and you just be like them. You're walking in darkness. But the Bible says ye are the light of the world. So you shouldn't be like that. You're meant to conform to the image of Christ. And those that are conforming to the image of Christ. Jesus said I am the light of the world. The Bible says of us. We are the light of the world. And we're to, to make sure that our light shines. And the way we do that. As it says in verse 16. Let me read it again. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Okay, so ultimately, as the, as the light of the world, and you doing good works, you're turning people to glorify the Father, to glorify God. And surely that's the purpose we have on the earth today is to turn men so that they glorify the Father. Okay, let's continue on. Have a look at Ephesians 5, verses 6 to 11. Ephesians 5, 6 to 11. We're looking at today conformed to the image of Christ. How are we to be? On this earth, how are we to be? But if we are believers in Christ, if we are Christians, if we've been born again, saved from sin, then we are to be conformed to the image of Christ, not conformed to the world. Not conformed to the world as many are doing at the moment. Okay, so remember that the Lord wants people to see our good works. That's the way the light is shining. It's meant to shine in our lives. So Ephesians 5, verses 6 to 11, says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. You know, if you look at Matthew 24, it points to deception as one of the great uh, problems of our time. And Jesus says, let no man deceive you. And here it says, let no man deceive you with vain words. How do, how do people get deceived? Through vain words, isn't it? Okay. I'm saying this for a purpose because we're going to... Uh, 
look a bit more about how the Lord Jesus Christ approached vain words in a minute. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Can you see that we are meant to do good works and shine our light? And notice that there are works of darkness. Part of shining our light, part of doing good works, is to reprove, okay, reprove, in other words, show up what these works of darkness really are. And have fellowship with them. Don't get involved with the works of darkness and become a, an evildoer as such. But, but show, show it by shining the light onto it and by doing the right thing whilst you're on the earth today. So there'll be people that, uh, for example, will devalue the church and will do things which will try to devalue Christ's church. That's part of the works of darkness. We need to reprove that type of thing and say, no, no. Christ said he will build the church. That means the church is being built. He will have a glorious church. That means that we are on that path to having a glorious church that will be presented to the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, what you're saying about the church, that is those in the world, those uh, who are compromised, is not right. And so we reprove that. And we come against those type of works. Can you see what I'm saying here? Notice that we, as verse 8 says, we were sometimes darkness. There was a time when we were darkness. We were not light of the world. We were not uh, walking in the light, but it says, but now are ye light in the Lord. Notice, in the Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are light. And as we, as we saw in Matthew 5, the light of the world. In other words, the world must see the light. And conforming to the image of Christ means that we must be seen more and more by the world by us shining the light and specifically shining the light of our good works. Now ye are light in the Lord, walk as children of light. Then it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. What's going to come out of your walk as a child of light? That fruit of the Spirit, goodness and righteousness and truth. In other words, you're conforming to the image of Christ and what you're bringing to the world are good things. Righteousness, truth, you're bringing all of that. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Well, there's lots around us that is not acceptable and we are to show what is acceptable unto the Lord through us walking as children of light, conforming to the image of Christ. Can you see what I'm saying? It's important for us, very important for us to come on board with this because I know that the Spirit of God is more and more speaking to the body of Christ about this very thing, this very thing. Now, there is going to be times in your reproving of the works of darkness when you're going to have to speak quite boldly and quite directly to evil men and evil things. Let's get let's look at an example in Christ's life, remembering that we're conformed to the image of Christ. Have a look at Matthew 23, verse 33. Matthew 23, 33. <clears throat> Matthew 
Now, we don't do know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and that's important for us to understand this. But that does not take the responsibility of men and women out of their hands. In other words, men and women are responsible for their actions. Okay? They're responsible for their actions. And in the sight of God, God will judge them for their actions. So looking at verse 33, this is Jesus speaking. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? So Jesus is talking to men here. He's talking to flesh and blood men, and he's calling them particular names here. He's calling them serpents. He's calling them vipers. And he says, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? See, we are living in a society full of vipers at the moment. In fact, a world full of vipers. And there is poison coming out. Let's have a look at what that poison might be. We actually mentioned it just before. But look at Romans 3. Romans 3. Look at verses 13 and 14 and you'll see some of that spiritual poison that's coming out of the serpents and vipers in our society. And notice what it says in Romans 3, verses 13 and 14. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps, it's a type of serpent, is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. So we see that there is deceit coming out, cursing and bitterness. These are spiritual poisons that are poisoning people. These are spiritual poisons. Now we know that the Lord Jesus Christ was bold and pinpointed these things and pointed it out when he had to. We are told to reprove the works of darkness. And this is showing love. Let me make it clear. This is showing love because what we're doing is we're showing what is the acceptable will of the Lord, which is not to have this, not to have deceit, not to have this uh, cursing and not to have this bitterness. Have a look also at Psalm 140 verses 1 to 3. Psalm 140. We are conformed to the image of Christ. We understand that the Lord had, whilst he was on earth, had many enemies. We also have enemies. I wish it weren't so, but it's the fact of the matter that there are enemies against Christ, against his people on the earth today. We can't just sort of sweep it under the rug and think that they, it doesn't exist. No, it does, but we have to approach it in the right way. We have to approach it in the godly way, in the truthful way. Psalm 140, verses 1 to 3. We don't, do not approach it by giving in and conforming to the world. We approach it by conforming to the image of Christ. Psalm 140, that's what it says. This is a good thing to pray. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Okay, so are there evil men and women on the earth today? Of course. Are there violent men and women on the earth today? Yes. Does the Lord Jesus Christ provide deliverance? Yes, he does. Should we claim that? Should we ask for that? Should we receive that deliverance? Yes, we should. Notice what it says. Keep on going. What, what is it within these people? Verse 2, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. That's where it all starts. In their heart. 
Continually they are gathered together for what? War. But the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay? So we are to be people of the word. And how we approach it is by through, is through the word, the sword of the spirit. Yet they continually are they gathered together for war. We are not on a neutral planet. And we can't think, well, if I conform to the world, everything will be nice and rosy. No, the, the devil will take an inch and more. He'll, he'll, he'll take a mile, you give him an inch. Okay? You must stand your ground. I am being conformed to the image of Christ. I am standing, and having done all to stand, I stand. And I'm going to shine the light of Christ whilst I'm on the earth. Listen, our life here whilst we're on the earth is but a vapour. That's what the word says. It is a small amount, relative decades, compared to what everlasting life is, is going to be. A million years from now, a million years from now, you'll look back and this life will just seem as though it passed by so quickly. But what you do now is very, very valuable for eternity. Very valuable for eternity. So looking at this, verse 2, which imagine, this is the evil man and the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually they are gathered together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent, adders poison, is under their lips. We looked at what that poison was. Deceit. Bitterness. Cursing. Adder's poison. Okay? That poison. Are we living in a society where many vipers are around? Where many serpents are around? Yes. We know that the Bible says that the devil is that serpent. So he has many minions around, yet we do not concentrate on that. Okay? We claim our deliverance, we receive our deliverance, and we continue to conform to the image of Christ, and we judge properly about things. We don't, we don't just give up and think, well, we can just go the way of the world and everything will be fine. Have a look at what John 7 verse 24 says. John 7 24. I've only got two more scriptures I want to go through. John 7 24. John 7 24. The Lord Jesus is speaking here. Now, if you're conformed to the image of Christ, you're going to be a people that, a, a person that is going to judge correctly about things. And you do it by looking into the word and you say, does it match with that or not? What is the Lord saying here? And you look at John 7, 24, it makes it clear. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Some people will point to that, that verse which says, judge not that you be not judged. But do you know when you look into that section of Scripture, talking about hypocrites there, are you a hypocrite? A, a, a Christian that's been conformed to the image of Christ is not a hypocrite. We are meant to judge correctly. And this is what it says. Judge righteous judgment. So around you, you're going to see the vipers. You've got to judge correctly. You've got to know what to say, you know what to do, you've got to seek the Lord and you've got to be conformed to the image of Christ more and more. Now having said that, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that we should be hating the people. Let's have a look at Matthew 5 again. What it does mean is that we're to be conformed to the image of Christ. Do we speak the right things? If people are serpents and vipers, we may have to say that. 
we may have to point out. You viper, you serpent, you asp. Look what you've got coming out of your lips. Look at the poison. Look at the deceit. You know, reprove the works of darkness. Look at the bitterness. Look at the cursing. You need to repent. Come to Christ. Believe the gospel. Believe the truth. Matthew 5, verses 43 to 48. 43 to 48. Now, this is the direction of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take it to heart because we are being conformed to the image of Christ. 43 to 48. It says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbour and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Jesus pointed to the way of love. And anyone that knows about faith and walking in faith will know that faith worketh by love. So we are not to be people that get consumed by hate. We are, as it says in verse 44, to love our enemies, to bless them that curse us, do good to them that hate us, Pray for them which despitefully use us and persecute us. Now understand that you have to speak directly, but there is also this other side that we should be practising as well, where we pray for others. We pray even for our enemies. And I want you to think about this because I believe there are many enemies of Christ at the moment in our society. But do you know one of the greatest vengeance that the Lord can have is for the enemies of Christ to become disciples of Christ? Isn't that what happened with Saul? Saul of Tarsus was a great enemy of the church. But God wonderfully changed him, wonderfully brought him into the kingdom, and he became one of the greatest ministers of God in the New Testament times. Well, that's going to happen in the future as well, where many enemies are going to change and become disciples of Christ. Many in the future. That will be one of the greatest testimonies of the power of God on this earth. Glory to God. So think about that. But you know, we can pray for people. We can pray for them in the spirit. And we will and should do so. And the Lord wants us to do that. And there is that love way so that our faith will work. And there are times where we need to be very bold I have a great desire to talk to some of these people, actually. Some of the people in leadership, for example. I'd like to be able to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with some of them. Perhaps the Lord will make way for that. Let's pray along those lines. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Let's close in prayer.